he sent you a lot uh, over the whole. I mean, I guess the course of your whole, you know, friendship and working together, he was he sent you a lot of stuff that wasn't that he hadn't shared with the band and just seemed like he was always feeding you music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, that was, um, you know, because we spent so much time together, we really I mean, there were you know, many nights, hours and hours and hours where it would just be him and me listening to records. And we, we smoked the same brand of cigarettes and, and, you know, we both like to drink whiskey and, and, um, you know, we would just listen to stuff all the time. And, and so he knew, you know, there was a lot that I liked all different kinds of stuff. And I think when he started writing the solo material, um, he felt it wasn't, something he wanted to bring to the band. And it was really kind of a secret thing that he did. So it was, uh, you know, it remains one of the greatest honors of my life that he, uh, you know, uh, shared those things with me. And it was, uh, you know, I mean, it, it, it really blew me away to the point where at one point uh, with a, a particular song he gave me um, about maybe eight, 10 months into him giving me these secret tapes, uh, he gave me a song called You're Getting Married. And I don't know if you know that one. We put it on as a bonus track on a reissue of Stink back in um, 2008, a CD reissue. And I guess it's on, um, I guess it's on the Sorry Ma box that we did in 2021 too for Rhino. But anyway, um, that song, when I heard it, 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 it genuinely frightened me. And I really did think this might be too large a talent for me to work with. I might, this might require somebody that has better, uh, I don't know, uh, managerial uh, 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 qualities than I have. It really was shocking to me. Those those re solo recordings of his to me were uh, breathtaking and it showed that, you know, other side. And, and that's why when we started making the first album and I thought there should be a single that led, you know, the charge. And I always thought, you know, the first thing a band ought to do is put out a single with a cool picture sleeve and a non-LP flip side. And so I said, OK, we got one song from the album. We'll use I'm in Trouble, B-side. I think, Paul, you should really use one of those solo songs. It would show to people you aren't a one trick pony. And he totally said, no way, man, that ain't the replacements. And I seriously thought that was an argument I was not going to win. But I just kept at it. I didn't I didn't overdo it, but I just I let him know at every appropriate opportunity that I thought that was the right move. And I think it was it just showed him. You know, I mean, that B side, if only you were lonely, is became before it was even really readily available. It only been on the seven inch and pre-internet. Once the seven inch wasn't around, it just passed around from hand to hand on cassette and stuff. We'd go do shows in places where uh, you know people would be singing along with every word of that song, and there was you couldn't buy that record. You know, it was so you know it was clearly a, a song that that uh, had an impact on you know people. For sure, as did his other solo things. Yeah. Uh, do you think it was Bob and, and Paul that were like, B Bob was like, this is, this is the replacement. This is going to be the replacement sound. And so Paul was going in one direction and Bob was like, no, we have to stay the course. Or what was, what was the dynamic within the band? Well, I think it's the song, you know, it's funny because Bob really took a shine to some of the more sophisticated stuff. I think a great example is Johnny's Gonna Die from the first album, because that was really the first ballad. You know, everything had been rockers up until that point. When he, we all went to see Gang War, uh, the, the um, uh, you know, Wayne Kramer, Johnny Thunders band that were very short lived. And um, it was just kind of bad, kind of awful. Um, and and we tried desperately to get out of the replacements on as an opening act and Husker Du got them and uh, they were a little further ahead, had a little more clout than the replacements did. And we were like, damn, you know, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it was just as well. We went to the shows and and Thunders was such a mess that, you know, it really I, it, I, I mean, I remember calling Paul the day after the show and I said, geez, that was kind of a sad show, wasn't it? And he said, yeah. And I said, so what have you been doing? He said, well, I got a new song. I said, what's it called? And he said, Johnny's going to die. And I was like, wow. OK. And then when I heard it, I was amazed at what Bob put into that song, because, as you say, it, Bob really was the guy who wanted to play, um, you know, the rockers. And and that's kind of where his style came from. He loved Johnny Winter. Um, he loved Steve Howe. You know, he loved uh, yeah, he loved rockers. And um, and uh, not that Steve Howe was necessarily a real rocker at that time, but uh, but he had the rock chops and, and clearly was a great uh, guitarist. And so the fact that Bob played so well on Johnny's Gonna Die 
um, I thought was, you know, that was really cool. But I just think Bob kind of was maybe the guard, uh, you know, on guard against too much of that. We don't want people to think we're, you know, pussies, you know. And uh, and so we got to remain rock and rollers. And uh, um, but, you know, Paul would introduce those songs. You know, they came in a little at a time. You know, Johnny's Gonna Die was first. And then on the second record, uh, the song Go, although it's kind of a rock song, that was still kind of a, a, a maybe a torch ballad kind of thing. Uh, and then on the third album, of course, there was Within Your Reach um, and Treatment Bound. And then on the fourth album, you know, there was... Uh, you know, um, answering machine and uh, and and unsatisfied and you know these were these were not straight ahead rockers and you know so Bob liked some of those but again I think he didn't want too much of it and uh, Paul's song started to get more sophisticated and Bob resisted and then that was a big part of why he you know left the band. 